Jeremy Crabtree on 3.com. We've had Ivan Mazel on a couple of times, even the day he joined us during Big 12 Media Days back in July. Before college football erupted with Texas, Oklahoma, the SEC, and everything else since that time, Jeremy's been covering national recruiting now for a long, long time. I've known him. For, <laughs> it's, it just means you and I are getting older. Uh, Jeremy, thanks for your time. Paul Catalina, Craig Spoke, join me as well. So, uh, obviously, if I said what's the biggest recruiting story leading into National Signing Day, there could be 10, 12, 15. But <laughs> in, in your opinion, who will have the most successful day of commitments? Alabama, Georgia, wow. A&M, Texas. Who? Who do you think might get the, the, the bulk? How about all three? <laughs> I think that that's what's kind of – that's what's scary, Smokey, is that we're in a spot where – I see all three teams closing really strong. Uh, I do think A&M has uh, maybe more uh, shots to take, so to speak, or more guys on the board that uh, could put them in, in the spot to finish with uh, their first ever recruiting cl- number one recruiting class in College Station. I think Texas might have a good day. I think Michigan's going to have a, a, a tremendous day. And I think Lincoln Riley, the former coach out at uh, Oklahoma, out there at USC, I think he's going to close really strong, too. So, uh, but 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 the real news is what's going to happen between Georgia, Alabama, and A and M for the number one class in the country. Uh, Texas, North Carolina, FSU, Missouri, all in your top fifteen uh, rankings. Uh, LSU is always going to be there, but Stanford at seventeen all didn't have good years, and they have top twenty recruiting classes. What do you <laughs> attribute that to among among that group of being able to rally uh, through you know maybe they're missing a ball or not meeting expectations and and having a good recruiting class so far? No, I, I think that's kind of what all three, all those schools are, are selling. And it doesn't hurt that both of them, or actually not both of them, but all of them have landed high-profile local commitments. With Kentucky, you're looking at Kenyatta Goodwin. Uh, Kenyatta Goodwin, the number one uh, five-star offensive tackle in the country. There is some smoke that he could maybe flip to Michigan State tomorrow, so we got to keep a track on that. Uh, with Missouri, they went out there and landed Luther Burden, one of the most dynamic playmaking uh, receivers in the St. Louis metro area that could have gone to Georgia or Alabama, places like that. North Carolina's done really well in their backyard. So you got it. When you see a team and you say, oh, well, well how are they there? You got to dig a little bit deeper and understand that, you know, we know Mac Brown can recruit. He's recruited forever and recruited well. That's why Carolina's there. You see Florida State, uh, they, they've done well locally. And then Missouri and Kentucky, they've got guys that uh, just really jump off the page at you that are high profile prospects. Jeremy, uh, the coaching carousel was obviously just completely <laughs> insane. Um, who yeah. of the new coaches have their the work cut out for them the most? Oh, man. How about LSU? I'm going to go a little bit local. I mean, yes, uh, LSU, you have kids that grow up in the boot that dream about playing for the Bayou Bengals, but then you get an, kindly, kind of an outsider, so to speak, uh, and, and Brian Kelly, that's not from the area, that's not the guy that uh, is uh, well known to the high school coaching community, other than he was at Notre Dame and he won a lot of games or won a lot of bonds there. So he's done a good job, I think, of surrounding himself with assistant coaches like Frank Wilson, who was a coach at McNeese and UTSA and uh, was the ace recruiter on that uh, LSU staff for decades. Uh, so he surrounded himself with good people, but. Other schools have noticed that there is an opportunity to come into Louisiana and get kids, whether it's A&M, whether it's Alabama, whether it's Georgia. So I look there. I also look at Mario Cristobal down at Miami. Uh, they, he's getting overwhelming support from the high school coaching community down there, and they want their South Florida kids to go to a Miami. Problem is uh, they still have to build the infrastructure. They have to get better facilities. They have to get better fan support. So he's going to rally them. I think if he can get some of these kids like a Shamar Stewart, that uh, five-star defensive lineman that was probably going to go to A&M at one point, but now is leaning toward waiting toward making his final decision. And then that opens the door for Miami. If he can get some of these kids to not sign tomorrow, rally late here for the February signing day, I think Miami could move well, but, uh, I think that both those guys got a lot of work ahead of them because that's just such a tough recruiting situation to battle with. Jeremy, how much for what used to be, and I'm not sure we know that there have been times when recruiting's dirty and maybe always has been, <laughs> I don't know, but the NIL 
We've seen mm-hmm. we've seen the mm-hmm. the run that Texas has made with offensive linemen since they came yeah. up yeah. with the NIL. We we know about other stories with the NIL. It's allowed to be done. How much has that changed in your opinion, or is it still just the rich get richer? Well, yes, I think there's that. I do think that uh, the rich are getting richer. You just look. I mean, you look at the class rankings. It, it, it's a, a second verse, same as the first, when you see Ohio State, Michigan, Notre Dame, Alabama, Georgia, uh, you know, Texas A&M at the top of the list. Texas is doing well. I just think it's really creating that separation, though, between the haves and the have-nots, and it's going to continue to create that separation. Uh, I, 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 mean, I am going to be fascinated uh, uh, to, to, to see what happens a year from now or two years from now to really dig deep into these prospects decisions after we get some data from a year or two in uh, recruiting cycles and ask them, uh, was the NIL your deciding factor? I think most honestly, it's probably a factor, but it's still not as important as uh, the the relationships that they have with their head coaches and their assistant coaches that are going to be coaching them every day or the opportunity to play right away or the facilities. I think it's kind of one of those cherries on top of the, the Sunday if you're a Texas or an A&M or an Alabama because if you're a, a five-star difference maker recruit, you can go anywhere and probably get good uh, NIL opportunities. It, but I am I, I'm, I'm good fascinated. I mean, if, if it really is, this reason number one or number two why a kid makes a decision. I have a feeling uh, we're going to see it's probably going to be like decision, the part of decision number three, two or three for a long term and from a factor standpoint. Is part of it now, though, that it's just so different everywhere that you it's it's not really going to be reasonable to get a read because, you know, Miami has a thing, Texas has a thing, SMU yeah. might have a thing, yeah. but not everybody's figured out how to uh, so have a front, so to speak, for lack of a better term. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and, and that's why you see the NCAA, uh, Mark Emmert, and the NCAA begging for uh, the, the federal government to step in and try to get some sort of federal guidelines as to the NIL because, well, let's be honest. I mean, I, I, I'm here in Kansas City. I know KU, K-State, Missouri cannot compete with uh, uh, with the, the, the Texases and the Alabamas of the world or even the Oklahomas. They can't compete with that just because of what they – what they have to battle with. So it's going to be something that is just utterly fascinating to follow. Uh, and, and, and also we're curious, we, we haven't talked about this, but the, is how much the market might come back here because there's been a lot of advertisers that spent a lot of money on some of these uh, high-profile college football players that they didn't pay off on the field. And there's been some pushback talking to people in the NIL world that uh, they might pull back and not spend as much in the future. So, yes, we're in a world where uh, Texas offensive linemen are going to get paid $50,000, but are we going to see the world where uh, somebody like Dr. Pepper still spends $2 million on a guy? Jeremy, uh, who are some of the the, the main guys to know tomorrow? For for those who don't follow recruiting closely and haven't been paying attention to, you know, who the number one player in the country has been all along, who are like a couple of the top premier blue chip five plus star type of guys that that we're going to need to know as college football fans moving forward well the, the good the good news is that a lot of those guys are right in our ballpark in the lone star state uh and then in, in walter no or not walter no he's committed to him but harold perkins let's talk about mm-hmm. him down the houston area at at, at, uh, at uh, cypress Cy park five star plus guy which means he it means he's ruined by all every recruiting service as a five star player the linebacker down there just dominated the high school football on both sides of the football dynamic 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 uh, he's decided to wait and not sign uh, tomorrow so we're going to have to wait a little bit on him but A&M was trading heavily with him the further he gets away from that uh, A&M lean it might open the door up for and for an LSU in, in standpoint, but if you're an A&M fan, you got to be excited about Evan Stewart, uh, the outstanding five-star plus receiver prospect from Liberty Frisco, uh, Frisco Liberty, excuse me. He opted out of his senior season, but was so dynamic when he was out there as a junior and uh, did well in his first couple of games of the season. He is tremendous. I'm going to give you also a couple of other names here to follow. Travis Hunter from in the Georgia area. He is at uh, Collins Hill High School, led his team to the Class 7A state championship this past week, and he's committed to Florida State. And, guys, I've been doing this, like uh, Smokey, you mentioned. I've been doing this for a long time. He's as close to a Deion Sanders playmaker 
on both sides of the ball at cornerback and receiver that we've seen in a long, long time. He idolizes uh, prime time. He's going to be going to Florida State. I think he immediately steps on the field right away. And one last guy, Damani Jackson, he's a huge recruiting battle between USC and Alabama right now. He's a five-star plus cornerback at Modern Day High School in Santa Ana, California. Modern Day is one of the top high school football programs in the country. Alabama, Nick Saban thought they had him, but now that Lincoln Riley's out there, the full court press has been put on him. It would not surprise me if he does end up a USC Trojan and Lincoln Riley's first major, major recruiting victory. Jeremy, one thing I have, and and, uh, thanks for your time today, a national recruiting analyst for On3.com. What's more important to win, National Signing Day or the Transfer Portal? (laughs) I think uh, you're seeing both, to be honest. I, I I do think you... Regardless, you have to have the Jimmys and the Joes. I mean, uh, we, we've seen uh, sign, winning the signing day where you can get the foundation of your high school class is so, so important. But if you can get those transfer portal guys, the free agents of college football, uh, they could complement and supplement the holes that you missed from your high school recruiting efforts. Uh, you're you're going to be winners. I do. The answer is both, but I do still think You have to have that high school foundation, and then you can complement it with the transfer portal. Thank you, Jeremy. Appreciate your time. That's Jeremy Crabtree uh, on 3.com, National Recruiting Analyst with us. Uh, We'll have a couple of segments tomorrow nationally of what's going on with National Signing Day once we get more of those who put their names on so-called the National Letter of Intent. And, uh, of, of course, look around at a couple of the other local stories here when it comes to what Baylor's done, but also the Big 12 and your school as well. And, and tomorrow we're going to rely on you as well as we do uh, in the chat room, or you can tweet at us, or you can even contact us on the text line about how you feel about the class of whatever team you like the most, whoever it might be, whether it's a blue blood and or not. When we come back.